So how does lens replacement work? Uh, the answer to that is it works a lot like cataract surgery, and I'll tell you why. First, I'm going to draw this eyeball here from the side like this. This is the globe of the eye looking out. On the front of the eye, you've got this cornea here, and then there's the iris, which is the colored part of your eye, blue or brown or green, and, uh, and then the lens, the natural lens, sits behind it. So this lens sits held suspended in the right place uh, because we can't just have it floating around inside the eye. It sits uh, held by these little things called zonules that are like little trampoline springs all the way around the lens. So in the case of cataract surgery, what happens is this lens gets so incredibly cloudy that you have to replace it with a new clear lens, and then a month later you get your pair of glasses and you're good. Cataract surgery is uh, the most common surgical procedure uh, billed to Medicare each year in the United States. It's wildly successful, and it's been around since the 40s. It's also evolved dramatically since the 40s. Lens replacement is basically the final step of that evolution. What happened is it went from cataract surgery requires an inpatient hospital stay and you lay on your back for a week with sandbags on either side of your head while you're uh, staring at the ceiling so that everything can heal up to the point where cataract surgery was an outpatient procedure um, and you got your glasses a month later. But as the lens technology got better and better and as the technology for diagnosing uh, the exact prescription necessary in that lens got better and better, between the diagnostics and the actual surgical technique and the technology that goes into the lens, eventually, even in the case of cataract surgery where this lens got really, really cloudy, we said we, we could get the lens to be more clear and the prescription to be whatever we wanted it to be after the surgery. And so somebody wisely said, uh, this is more of an apocryphal story, but they, they said uh, if, if we can get the prescription to be whatever we want and we can get a lens that's higher quality than anyone's lens has been since it was probably 18 years old or so, why are we waiting until somebody's got such a cloudy cataract that they can barely drive a car comfortably? Shouldn't we just fix the problem the moment that we can intervene and make the vision better than it was before and make somebody glasses free? Uh, and, and yes, his apocryphal friend said, and that's how lens replacement was born. Um, truly, that's, that's the general idea behind it, except that that evolution happened over a couple of years instead of over a single conversation. So with lens replacement, what we're doing is we're leveraging the 75 years of cataract surgery technology and using that with this proven safety and efficacy record and then bringing in the newer technology that we have now that can give us very exact prescriptions when we're done in order to replace this lens with one that's perfectly clear and prevents you from needing glasses where that's the primary goal what's going to be the best thing to give me the best vision so that I don't need glasses afterwards. That's lens replacement, which is different than cataract surgery, which is how can I get uh, my driver's license because they took it away because my lens is just too cloudy to see very well. So the, uh, the deal with uh, intraocular lens technology is uh, lenses in general, uh, the one that we replace, they look a bit like this. And, uh, and it's, it's kind of like a hurricane. And this part is called the optic. And these arms here are called uh, haptics. Both of those things are. And so what happens is you've got this optic that is uh, perfect. And, and I mean that literally. You can measure how much aberration there is inside of any sort of optical surface, whether it's a, a scope on a gun or a telescope that's looking at Jupiter or one of these lenses, you can actually mathematically measure how, the, how many aberrations or what aberrations are there. And so getting an aberration zero lens is possible now. This is also, this wasn't the case a couple of decades ago, but this optic uh, is perfect. And so uh, that's all well and good, but it, it doesn't do you much good if there's no way to have it stay in the same spot. And so that's what these little haptic arms are for. This lens sits inside this capsule. Now, first off, I've drawn this lens a little too small. Secondly, you may wonder, well, how, what about the lens that we said was there? Well, that lens actually leaves during the surgery 
and it leaves behind this perfect little capsule uh, that held the previous lens so that it can hold the new lens. And, and now you have this new crystal clear lens sitting in the same capsule held by that same little ring of uh, zonules, ring of trampoline springs all the way around so that it stays in the same spot for the rest of your life. The difference with this lens is it's made out of, drum roll, acrylic. Uh, and acrylic, uh, first off, just a quick point, there are no cases uh, on record uh, of somebody uh, in the tens and tens and tens of millions of eyes that have had cataract surgery and gotten acrylic lenses. Uh, the, no allergy. Part of that is because of the immune privileged state of the eye, um, but acrylic is inert inside the eye. It's actually how Harold Ridley, who first had the idea of using an intraocular lens replacement, using one of these uh, actual artificial lenses, uh, he got the idea because uh, there was acrylic in people's eyes that he saw and it had no reaction inside the eye. And so all of these years later, uh, there's never been a case of somebody being allergic to this actual material. Um, and so I just say that because I get that question a lot. You know, what if I'm allergic to it? Uh, and the answer is uh, no one. No one is so far. Um, and so this, uh, uh, this, this acrylic here is, is optically perfect and it stays that way for your whole life. And so um, it doesn't change over time. It doesn't degrade over time. The contrast sensitivity perfection and the prescription that you've got, it stays the same throughout the rest of your life. Uh, the, the one other thing that I wanted to make sure that we talked about before we, uh, before we go is this idea of, uh, it's, it's, a long, it's a long phrase, intraoperative laser aberometry. So uh, intraoperative laser aberometry is a really long-winded way to say that with Star Trek-like technology, there's this uh, part of the actual procedure itself where we're able to use a laser. Now it's an invisible laser, so you can't see it, uh, and neither can I, but what it does is it sends in this invisible grid pattern of laser light uh, in the actual procedure and then measures it as it comes out to give us what the exact prescription is that this eye has. And so it's this thing that we never had available to us before. Calculating the power of this, of this intraocular lens was always the product of coming up with very exact dimensions of the curvature of the eye and the length of the eye and the proportions of the eye and then doing math to figure out what power lens do you need. With intraoperative laser aberometry that's uh, come along now just in the last decade, the difference is there's this one part of the procedure where the old lens is gone and there's no new lens there, and you're able to do this measurement and it gives us, without you having to do any sort of better one, better two type of testing, what's the exact power that we need for this lens, uh, and so it makes it uh, significantly more accurate. It kind of takes the, the guesswork out. It's an extra safety feature that we have now. It's the only part of the procedure uh, that I'm still, uh, every single time, I'm just in wonder of it. Uh, you know, over time you do enough of these and everything becomes sort of the normal thing uh, and, uh, and, and it's all uh, very routine, which is what you want it to be. You don't want the procedure to be exciting. This right here is something that makes it feel magical every time. Uh, all of these different pieces of technology have contributed to the ability to do lens replacement so that we can get somebody out of glasses before they get cataracts and have difficulty seeing just to do their normal tasks of living.